This episode has been brought to you by Fast Hosts. Find out more about them later. Today we're going to do Hello World on the Mega Drive, following on from the last video. So this is a cross products Mega Drive development kit uh, with Mega CD kit built in uh, from around 92, 93. I use this to create Tanglewood, which is the Sega Mega Drive that was released last year. And the whole thing was written in 68,000 assembly language using all my own editor tools and things that I've written to go with the engine. So for the past couple of videos, we've been showing very slowly how to get Hello World on the Mega Drive. Um, everything from initializing the system to loading palettes to it. Um, and today we're going to show how to load graphics tiles to it and hopefully get some text on screen. The Mega Drive doesn't have any kind of text mode system on it. It doesn't have any built-in fonts. Um, it doesn't run an operating system, nor does it have any kind of standard library. A uh, machine comparable at the time would have been the Apple Macintosh, which have had a printf function, would have had its own built-in system fonts and stuff to do that. The Mega Drive's got nothing. When you switch it on, the memory's empty, you have to do everything yourself. We have to design our own font, we have to upload those font glyphs to the video memory. We then have to write our own text routines to get text on screen. For now, we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to create a very basic font ourselves. We're going to show Hello World on screen. The um, Mega Drive has a tile-based graphics processor, so it doesn't have a bitmap system or a frame buffer. You can't draw lines or vectors on it. The screen is made up of tiles, and in this particular setup, that's 40 tiles wide and 30 tiles high. And each tile is eight by eight pixels wide, with each entry in that tile relating to a palette entry. So we've already uploaded the palette. So palette zero is always transparent, so we ignore that. So say we've got red, green, and blue as colors one, two, and three in the palette. To populate the tile, we need to put one, 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 one for the top row of that tile to be red. The rest would be zero, which would be transparency. So that'll give us a single horizontal line at the top. This should be eight by eight, but I can't draw very well, so there we go. So to place this tile onto the screen, within each plane, we have a, a grid. So we would have multiple tiles uploaded to video memory. We could reference them as zero, one, two, three, etc. So for each of these cells on screen, we would have one, two, tile seven there, etc. And if we upload a blank tile first, then the rest would be zero and they would show nothing. So let's imagine that's tile one, relating to this tile on the screen, and that's color one relating to this color in the palette, and that's how the graphics are made up on screen. There are two scrolling planes on the Mega Drive, so we can have multiple tiles overlapping each other. We can also scroll those planes independently. We can also scroll each individual line of those planes so we can make wavy effects, etc. Um, there's also the sprite plane on top of that and the window plane, but we'll explain those in a future video. So in the previous video, we've already showed step one, which was how to upload the palette. So we've got a palette here, 16 colors. Just for a reminder, the first one is always transparency. This is E, 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 which is white. This is red, green, and the rest of these are all black. So that palette is uploaded to video RAM using this macro here, set CRAM right. So that sets up the graphics processor to re receive data um, at a color RAM address, which we specify there. Here we move 15, which is 16 minus one, ready for the loop counter. We set the CRAM address we want to write to, which is zero, which is the first palette. We load the palette into an address register, and then we loop over each word in the palette and upload it to the VDB data port. We then use this command here to set the background color to two, which gave us a red screen or orange screen on YouTube. <laughs> uh, so we're going to do something very similar for the tiles. First, we need to design our own tile. So these tiles are 32 bytes. With each nibble, that's a half byte relating to a color in the palette. So we're going to have eight pixels for this top row, and it's eight pixels down. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that'll give us a blank tile. We can then fill this in with the glyphs. Let's do an X pattern just to show it off. And each one of these nibbles relates to a color number in the palette. So here we've got transparency zero, white, red, green, blue. So we're gonna go for white, which is color one. So for each of the pixels we want to be white, we fill in one. So it's a bit like uh, ASCII art, this, isn't it? It is, yes, very much like ASCII art. We're going to ignore the right hand and the bottom hand column because these tiles are um, adjacent to each other, so we want a gap in between. 
Okay, so there's our X pattern. And we are going to upload this to the first address in VRAM. That's where all the tiles are stored. So we're going to need the set VRAM right macro to set it to address zero. But before we do that, I'm going to do some more defined at the top here to make the code easier to read. We've got the size of our palette in bytes, words, and long. So we're going to do the same again for the tile. So the size of a tile in bytes is 32 bytes. Size of tile in words is size tile bytes over two and size of tile in longs is size tile bytes over four so that makes our code a little easier to read so very similar to how we uploaded the palette here we're going to move the size of the tile in long words minus one for the loop counter into register d0 we're going to call our macro to set the VRAM address. So set VRAM right. And we're going to go for the very first tile on screen, zero. Would that be and top left then? That would be the entire screen because the whole screen is already filled with zeros. So they're all, all tiles on the screen are going to be referencing tile zero. So if we upload our X to tile zero, the whole screen is going to be full of Xs. And that's because up here we've already cleared VRAM, set VRAM right zero, and we've looped through the whole of VRAM setting it to zero. So we're going to load our tile into an address register zero. We're going to then create a loop tile, right loop, and then for each long word in that tile and increment the address every time, we're going to write that to the VDP data port and then decrement and branch our loop counter, which is D0, back up to the tile right loop. If all goes well, that should give us a full screen full of X tiles. Uh, so let's assemble that and then load it up in the debugger. So this is sending it to the... Yeah, sending it to the dev kit and using the debugger to control the dev kit. So we'll load the binary, main.conf. We'll reset the CPU. Now we have our source on screen. The executable's loaded onto the debugger. So step one is to connect the debugger, write the TMSS signature, which lets us use the GPU. Uh, we then load the register table, which sets up the GPU. Here is where we clear VRAM. Uh, here is where we wrote the palette in the last video. So just below this is our new code where we're going to write the tiles. So if I set a breakpoint here and then run, that's now executing on the Mega Drive and we've already got up to this point here when we stopped. So if I step through this one by one, I can show you what's going on. So we move the size of the tile that we're going to write in long words, minus one for the loop counter into D0. So that's seven there. We're going to set the VRAM port to receive address zero. We're going to load the address of our tile that we've just written into address register A0. And then for each long word in the tile, we're going to write it to the VDP data port and then increment the address each time and then loop until it's all completed. So I'm going to set another breakpoint on to where that's finished. And then if I continue on, that should do all of that. There we go. So there's our screen full of X tiles. So that's step one. Step two, uh, we're going to need more than one tile. So we're going to need to design a font for this. We will leave the first tile blank, which is a bit wasteful because we've already cleared whole of VRAM, so the first tile's already blank, but this is a good teaching tool to see. So now we're going to need glyphs for all of the text in Hello World. So we're going to need H, an E, an L, an O, a W, an R, and a D. So let me just design all those font glyphs. So we're going to need an H in red. This is going to take some considerable time. So there's our H. There's our E. There's an L. Did you have to do this for Tanglewood then? Did you have to design it or did you uh, find... Uh, I did originally for the first system font that I made just to... Uh, show debugging info on screen and that sort of stuff but uh, once i've made my own graphics tool set i will manage to import all the fonts there's our o there's a wonky w how do you art There's an even wonkier R. And the world's worst D. <laughs> Is that a D? Probably a D. Let's find out if it's a D. Okay, so there we have our space, an H, an E, 
an L, an O, a W, an R, and a D. So in order to reference those tiles, we can do some defines to make this easier. So if we have tile ID space is tile zero, tile ID H is gonna be one. Does that purely come down to what order they appear in that list then? Yes, because we're gonna upload those consecutively. Each tile will be next to each other in VRAM, so we can then refer to these by indices. D is gonna be seven. I'm also gonna add the count so we can refer back to it. So max tiles is gonna be eight. Correct that L. Okay, so now we need to upload all of these tiles to VRAM, not just the first one. So we've got our count here, max tiles. So we're just gonna update our loop to update all eight of them. So size tile in longs, multiply by the number of tiles, minus one for the loop counter. So if we assemble that and run it, we should now have a blank screen again because our first tile in memory um, is a blank tile that we're gonna be used for the space. Uh, so that's full of tile ID zero and tile ID zero is completely blank. Um, so the next step. So as I explained before, we've got several planes on the Mega Drive, an A plane, a B plane. We've also got sprites and window planes as well, but we're gonna ignore those for now. Um, so in order to show one of these tiles on screen, we need to write to the particular cell, the tile ID that we want to show at that cell. Um, so these planes have their own addresses in VRAM. If we refer back to our VDP registers table, which we wrote in the first video, you can see here we've got pattern table for scroll plane A, the window plane, and the B plane there. And according to these registers, I've set this up at address C000. So if we start writing address to C000, that will be the tile IDs for this particular plane. Back here again, we're going to use our VRAM write macro again, so set VRAM writes, and instead of writing to zero, we're now gonna to write to C000, which is the address of plane A. So all we need to do to show one of these tiles at the start of plane A, which is 00 in the top left-hand corner, is to write the tile index that we want to show, tile ID H to the VDP data port. So that will write the ID of tile H to the start of plane A. And hopefully, so we reset the processor and if we run that now, there we go, there's our H in the top left hand corner. So we're most of the way there now. We just need to do some copying and pasting. So we don't need to set the VRAM to write to the next address every time because according to our VDP register table, we've got the auto increment register set to two bytes. So every time we write to the VDP, it's gonna automatically increment the address by two bytes. Um, and each cell here is two bytes wide, so that's perfect for us. So let's copy that H, E, L, L, O, space, W, O, R, L, D. Again, doing the space is a bit wasteful because this space in the VDP data should already be blank. But instead of recomputing the right address ready for the W, it's a lot quicker to just write the space again. W O R L D. So let's assemble that. And fingers crossed, I haven't messed any of this up again. And there's the money shot with a wonky R. Fast Hosts is a UK-based web hosting company which offers a wide range of web hosting products and other services. They aim to support UK businesses and entrepreneurs at all levels, providing effective and affordable hosting packages to suit any need. Their virtual private servers are fast and give you access to affordable VPS hosting with dedicated resources including 100% SSD storage, plus their data centers are in the UK and you have the choice of Linux or Windows operating systems. If you want, you can have a dedicated server. Fast hosts provide high performance hardware with Intel Xeon processors and storage options including super fast NVMe SSDs, perfect for those demanding projects. They also offer cloud servers, cloud backup or bare metal solutions. Because their data centers are based in the UK alongside their offices, whether you go for a lightweight web hosting package or a fully fledged dedicated box, you can talk to their expert support teams 24-7. Find out more by following the link in the description below.